So the time has come for me to manufacture my PCB for my current project after ensuring all the components, the parts and the schematics are in place. And soon after I confirm the PCB layout, I will be ready to finally manufacture my PCB using the modern day convenience of an online PCB manufacturing service. And it has become just so much easier to just upload the Gerbers to a PCB manufacturer's website and get the PCBs shipped to us in a matter of just a few days. Even with the convenience, I remember the first time when I tried to order these PCBs and I saw all the specifications that I needed to choose and it was pretty daunting. For someone who is not versed with the PCB manufacturing industry, terms like material, thickness, and surface finish were a bit confusing. So in today's video, I want to share what these capabilities and specification terms mean using PCB Ways manufacturing uh, the website service. And then we will learn how to link these uh, dimensions and specifications to KiCad, which is my PCB layout software. And we will do so with the help of checklists, just so that we don't become overwhelmed and feel that it is so uh, daunting. And we will break these tasks into tiny, tiny steps. So let's dive into online PCB manufacturing using checklists. One of the first checklists that I make even before digging into the specifications is to have a general feel of how complex the PCB will be. And constraints help us gauge whether we need to talk to the manufacturer or the factory directly or whether a simple online order will suffice. So here I have a very, very simple checklist just to remind myself about how complex the board is. My board is not at all complex and these are the steps that I have uh, done to ensure that it is not. So firstly, it is a two layer board. It is not a multi layered board. It has only digital signals, not analog signals. It has only low voltage of 3.5 three volts. Maybe we can go up to five volts, but uh, not um, very high voltage. It has only direct current, DC, not AC, and fairly low speed signals, not high speed signals of uh, in the range of say megahertz or gigahertz. And I am also manufacturing only five PCBs. I can probably stretch it to 10, but definitely not above 100. And the PCB that I'm making is definitely not going to be used in any industrial aerospace, military, medical, or any other restricted industry. Now, this is not to say that any of these complicated uh, checklists that I have uh, added cannot be ordered online, but as a general feel, as the cost goes up and the number of days to manufacture the PCB goes up, I think it is worth it to consider uh, contacting the manufacturer or the factory in this case, just to make sure that the PCB manufactured when we get it in our hand is working correctly. So now that we have dealt with the constraints and the complexity of our PCB, the next exciting thing is to look at the PCB manufacturer's capabilities. Many dimensions are listed on the PCB manufacturer's website and we need to use these dimensions and build them in KiCad PCB layout. So in order to access the PCB manufacturer's capabilities website, all we need to do is search for the manufacturer name, in this case it is PCB way, and then type in capabilities. So the first search will give us the capabilities of the PCB manufacturing. So I'm going to click that. And here on this page, we will see a long list of dimensions and many other specifications that we should ensure in our PCB layout. So let's start with the first one, which is number of layers. It can be until 10, but uh, I'm doing two. So that's within the capabilities for material. I I will be using FR4. So that is also possible. Next is the dimension. So it's good that I check it here. It will be about 5 cm to 11 cm. So when I come to KiCad, this is how my unfinished PCB layout currently looks like. But if we look at the edge cut layer, so I'm going to hide our layers and just this one, we can measure it. I'm going to also make sure that it is in metrics, uh, not in inches. And uh, I'm going to press the space 
space bar and then the dy in this case sorry the dx in this case is 13.5 and the dy in this case once again i'm going to press space bar is about 35 so you can see that the maximum is 11 so i got to do something about it or if this is not within the standard i should be once again as they say should contact the sales representative so there are many many dimensions so let's go through three of the main ones to get started with the first one that we are going to look at is something called minimum trace or minimum spacing and in this case pcb way has said it is 0.1 millimeter of four mils now we have to be a little careful about the conversion because as you see here 0.1 millimeter is not equal to 4 it is slightly less than 4 and if we do a reverse conversion we will see that it is actually slightly more than 0.1 millimeter so in this case i would say that we should not put our dimensions exactly to either 4 mils or 0.1 millimeter because we might be pushing their manufacturing capability. So now that we know that the minimum is 0.1 or 4 mils, we can come to KiCad and select file and then we will go to board setup. So here under design rules net class, I have set up a couple of lines. So for all the default traces, the clearance I have put is 0.2 millimeter, not 0.1. And for power, it is always a little thicker. So I've put it to 0.3 millimeters. Once again, for track width also, I've made sure that I am not very, very near to 0.1 millimeters. So with these two set, I have also uh, set, let's search for power, apply the filters. I've set a couple of nets, uh, which is 3.3 volts and ground to power. Let me go back to all, but uh, I can also include more. So definitely V bat can be power and V bus can be power too. And now when I come to say ground and try to draw the traces, notice at the top left hand corner, it will automatically go to 0.4 millimeter. But when I choose a non-power uh, pad and let's try to draw a trace from there, notice it is a lot thinner. And here you will notice that it will automatically switch to the thinner trace width. Now, the other thing that I like to do to show the clearance while I'm designing it is to go to preferences and then PCB new display option. I put the cl track clearance to always uh, show always. Let's press OK. And now you will see that they will have these fine uh, lines around each of the tracks or even in this case, the wires. The next Next common thing to check are the hole sizes, for example, for drills, for mounting holes, or even wires. And this will include the minimum width as well as uh, something called annular ring which is defined as this uh, circular dimension of this donut shape thing that the wires tend to have. So once again, uh, the minimum size is 0.2 to 6.3 and the annular ring should be 0.15 mm for PCB way. So once again, we can do that check by going to board setup and we see the wire size here and the wire drill. These are the inner circle and the outer circle. And I'm definitely... Uh, not pushing the boundaries of 0.2 mm. So that's fine. So I will drop a via here for the power line and I'm going to measure the diameter. So the inner circle is about 0.2. Okay. And the outer diameter is about 0.4, uh, which is also fine. And the annular ring in this case is 0.2. And that is also more than the minimum width of the annular ring of the manufacturing capability. And the final capability that I generally check are for the text and the characters. So here you can see they say the minimum character width is 0.15 mm and the character height is also 0.8 mm. So similarly, I can go to the board setup. And in this case, we will go to the layers and ensure that our text width and uh, text height are greater than what is specified. 
So I have uh, done to 1mm because this is also something that I can read, especially for prototype PCBs. So now when I put a text here, say hello, it will be 1.5mm with a 0.3 thickness or I can go to the front sill screen and I can put to 1mm and say 0.15mm thickness, hello, and it will be fine. So once again, make your own checklist. And this is something that I have made uh, in terms of dimension, the number of layers, material, board thickness, kind of check through the minimum trace and spacing, the drill size, minimum and maximum, as well as the width of the annular ring and the character or the text height. Of course, uh, depending on the manufacturer, I will once again go through the list. But for PCB way, this is what uh, I go through generally. So other than the PCB manufacturing capabilities, I also check with the ordering page specifications before getting deep in work with the PCB layout because you know, there might be other gotchas. So this is PCB ways ordering page. And here there are also some specifications that are good to go through even before doing the PCB layout, just so that we know what is the general build time as well as the total cost. And as they increase, it will also give us a general indication on how complex or non-standard the manufacturing process will be. So let's go through the board type. I will be doing single pieces and different designs. Yep, I will have one, but notice uh, if I choose two, the cost will also increase. In terms of dimension, I will go with 10 to 5 millimeters. Of course, we can uh, change into inches, but this is within their specification once again. And in terms of quantity, I can, uh, let's say, choose 50 and notice it will be $19. Well, that's pretty affordable. But uh, anyway, I will go for only five pieces for $5. In terms of layers, I will go with two layers. But if I choose one layer, oh, wow, this is interesting. It goes uh, higher in cost. I guess um, this is something that has become non-standard. But if I go to four layers, it obviously increases in cost as well. Six layers is even more. And uh, yep, I will choose to two layers, which is still 24 hours and $5 in cost. In in terms of material, I will go with FR4, but uh, let's choose aluminium. I'll go with one layer. No, two layer aluminium. Aluminium has to be one layer. That's interesting. But anyway, you see the cost uh, increases once again. So I will go back to two layers and FR4. Let's move on to the FR4 temperature and I will use the lowest range. But of course, for industrial application, the higher range can be used and you can see the cost will also go up higher. In terms of thickness, this is very interesting. I will be choosing the standard one, which is 1.6 mm. But there are situations where thinner or thicker PCBs might be used. For example, this is Tomu, which is supposed to fit inside our USB connector. And uh, the makers of Tomu have explained that most standard PCBs are 1.6 mm, but because the Tomu is supposed to fit inside the USB connector, it needs to be at least 2.4 mm because the maximum size of the USB connector is 2.5 mm. So this entire tiny little PCB is supposed to fit inside the USB connector and that's why it has to be slightly thicker. So let's see just for fun, what happens if we choose 2.4, the cost uh, goes up and so does the build time. Similarly, if we look at Raspberry Pi Pico, we will notice that it is uh, thinner in size. It is one mm thin and and that's because it is meant to be surface mountable as a module on other PCBs. So they have made it thinner. And in this case, if I choose 1 mm, okay, it is still $5. So I will choose 1.6 mm. Yeah, I can choose 1 mm. Never mind. I will choose 1.6 mm and the cost is still $5. So for the minimum track space width, you can also go lower. And in this case, it will take longer and more cost. This shows that this uh, the complexity of the manufacturing goes slightly higher. I will choose a 6 mm. And in terms of the whole size as well, we can also go lower, but once again, the cost goes higher. But yep, I am going to choose back to 0.3 mm. These are once again, stuff that we have to ensure in the manufacturing capabilities and tie it with KiCad's board setup. So let's go to the solder mask I will choose green and uh, for sill screen it will be white but if we choose other colors let's say black it is the same cost but it just takes a few more days but yep I am going to choose a green in this case and what about the edge connector I do not have any edge connector but if I do have 
the cost goes up significantly and there are other options to choose from. And in terms of surface finish, I can choose HASL with lead. Well, lead free would be nice. All right, so it is the same cost. So I'm gonna choose lead free for via process. Actually, I can ignore it because I will be providing the Gerber files, but nevertheless, I will still choose the option that they have provided. And finally, the finished copper, I will once again go with one ounce copper, but uh, just for curiosity, two ounce Yep, the build time goes up as well as the cost. So one ounce copper is fine for me. That's uh, like a general feel about what a prototype PCB specifications might be. Once again, uh, we have to go through the constraints checklist that I went through at the start of the video to get a feel of the complexity. Now, the final thing is, well, after all, we are manufacturing and they are atoms and molecules is the shipping. So we can play around with the shipping options. DHL is slightly more expensive it takes slightly lesser number of days but uh, I guess I can live with a few more days and with two dollars lesser so my total will be about US $21. So once again make your own checklist to go through the ordering page of uh, PCBWay or any other online PCB manufacturing service that you are using. The one that I have includes dimension, number of layers, thickness, copper weight, PCB color, silk screen and surface finish. Of course feel Feel free to edit it and add or delete your own options in the checklist. So over the years, I have depended on checklists to go through the PCB manufacturing options just so that I don't become overwhelmed with each of the little, little specifications that are required. And even then, you know, every checklist is not cast in stone. And every time I get back the PCBs that are manufactured and they are in my hand, I keep tweaking it. And of course, every project and every circumstance and application of the PCB also is different in terms of the checklist. So other than PCB manufacturing, I also have tiny little checklists for other stuff. For example, bill of materials or even uh, things to check before I buy certain components, making footprints, making schematics and many, many other processes. And it seems like I'm not the only engineer to use checklists. One of my favorite podcasts, On the Metal, a bunch of nerds are also talking about checklists. Have a listen. I gotta say, I'm surprised <laughs> that more people don't use more checklists in everyday life. Okay. You guys are all just stunned no, right now. No, 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 no. No, no I was just no, reflecting not. on, I use checklists for checklists, oh, which yeah. is not very useful. Wait, how does I don't that get work? To the, the end result okay. of getting through the checklist of the checklist. checklist for checklist. But yes. Like, did we do the X checklist? Yeah. Kind of just need to like execute on the first checklist. Huh. I don't know how people survive without checklists, actually. Yeah, no, I'm a big checklist person. It's nice because it feels like you, you need that like that. So I would love to know from all of you out there, what do you look out for in a PCB manufacturing capabilities or specifications? And do you use checklists as well, maybe for PCB manufacturing or for other engineering processes? So let me know your thoughts in the comment below. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.